All right, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome into the aftershock. Of course, I've got a frog in my throat right when I'm about to go on and do this, and this is the, the aftershock. So the microphone is up here in the camera, and I don't have the ability, I don't have a button I can press, a cough button. You know, like on the KFAB here, I can push the cough button, and it disables the microphone so I can cough and hack and wheeze, and then, you know, when I'm ready to talk, I just let the button go, and then it's back on again. It interrupts the microphone. Don't have that now, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, I am uh, running running low. Uh, it's been a it's been a week. Uh, I mentioned on Thursday I pulled a 22-hour shift uh, for one of our clients to try to to get them squared away and cleaned up. I can't imagine the level of uh, of work involved with Papillion Labista situation. That uh, I mean, the the calculations that I did assume that they had a 25-person full-time 25-person tech team, which I'm sure they don't have. Um, so that's probably why it's taken a couple months to clean it up, to be honest. Plus, you've got you know people who are on vacation who are not around and they don't have their computers in, and it's just uh, it's been it's been nuts. Um, so forgive me if I'm a little punchy and a little tired. I'm still I've learned that at my age, I'm not able to stay up all night and function the next day very well. <laughs> Went to my son's birthday party. And uh, we, we uh, were at a facility where you could rent the field, basically. He wanted to play football with his friends. That's what he wanted to do for his birthday. So we rented a little field, basically. And uh, he was in there playing football. And uh, the kids kept asking me, how much time do we have left? And I said, uh, we, we're good. We have till 2. And the party started at 4.30. And in my head, my brain was saying, we bought two hours of time on the field. And in my mouth, it was coming out as we have it on until 2 because the brain and the mouth weren't, weren't working very well. However, I will say that uh, they got tired of football and they started playing dodgeball. And uh, oh yeah, I dropped some. I dropped some bad level dodgeball strategy. I mean, I had the headband. I was I was ready to go, knocking knocking me some kids over. I got knocked over a couple times too. But the next morning, I was actually sore from playing dodgeball. I'm like, what kind of world is this that I'm sore from dodgeball? I'm not I'm not 20 anymore. That's for sure. Uh, staying up all night, not for me. Drinking all night, not for me. Dodgeball. Only in moderation, you know? <laughs> okay, so I spent, I felt like this show today was like the most boring, dry, nah, show that I could have done. Um, but it needed to be said, and it needed to be emphasized. And the problem is, and I'm sorry if it came across as too uh, too pushy, but the problem is that as, as hard as I pushed on it today, we're going to get like, five people that come into the service centers to have their phones protected today. That's it. That's all. Five people are going to do it. And then somebody's going to get infected. They're going to be like, I was going to come in. This is like when Drive Advisor goes off and tells our, one of our customers that their hard drive is failing. Then we actually call them because we find it alerts us that your C drive is failing and you're under warranty. So we're like, okay, yeah, let's give you a call. Hey, your hard drive is failing. It's under warranty. Come on in. Let's get that fixed for free. Don't use the computer until you get it fixed because it can get worse. And then a month later, they bring the computer and like, yeah, yeah, it's got a bad hard drive. Drive Advisor, let me know that. And we go to, to, to clone the hard drive to get their data transferred over, but the hard drive is completely dead. And we're like, well, it, we, and we, we go back and look at the logs, and the guy's been using the thing for like a month. We're like, we told you to bring it in right away. Well, nobody told me I could lose everything if I didn't. Yes, that's true. Nobody specifically said your hard drive is the device in your computer that stores all of your computer's information. All your files are there. And that device is failing right now. And if it fails completely, you will lose all of your information. So you should bring that in right away so that we can get your information transferred while it's still functional. Am I okay? So now we literally have to say that on the phone because we had one guy who was like, you didn't tell me that. And he, he wanted a free data recovery. Well, data recovery is not covered by the warranty. That's what Drive Advisor is all about, to get you to come in before it gets bad enough to need data recovery. So anyway, um, yeah, would it have made a difference if they had a Barracuda firewall? You know, that's the problem, Keith. Uh, I, it it could have. Um, chances are not. Now, here's the thing. There's a story here on ZDNet that I didn't get to. And it was, it was not particularly, you know, exciting. Three out of four phishing scams get to your inbox untouched. How many times a day does your email box enjoy a phishing scam? A lot, according to a UK study. Now, phishing is P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Phishing is the act of sending out millions and millions of emails to trick people into doing things. So last Sunday, when all this stuff started hitting, there was a ton of hacking going, out, going around. 
I was getting notifications on my phone that people were trying to log into my Capital One account. I guess they somebody I have a circle.com account. I don't even know what that is, but it had two-factor authentication set up and people were trying to log into that. I'm getting text messages, I'm getting emails that my passwords are being reset, and I don't I'm not resetting any passwords. And the emails say, if this wasn't you, click this link, which is the opposite of what it normally says. Normally it says, if this wasn't you, please disregard this message, right? So why would people be sending me an email telling me that my password has been reset, and if this was not me, click this link? Well, duh, obviously I'm not resetting my password, so it's not me. Oh my goodness, I better click that link that's going to infect my computer with a virus. People do it. And honestly, if I had to lay money on it, a lot of the people that got hit with these ransomware infections, I got an email probably from a supplier that looked like it was from a legit supplier that said there was an unpaid invoice, please open for details and balance aging. And they opened the invoice and it infected their computer. Internet Explorer, you don't have to do anything if you're using Internet Explorer. You just have to be breathing and you can get infected using Internet Explorer. Um, don't use Internet Explorer. It's terrible. <clears throat> so I'm glad, thank you, Carolyn. I'm glad that you enjoyed the show today and that it was, uh, that it was informative. Um, yeah, I understand, Loanne. It's, it's kind of tough to bring it in from Michigan. I get that. Um, in some Android devices, we can actually protect those um, ourselves in the service center. Or without, we can remote into them over the shock desk is what I'm trying to say on my sleep-deprived brain. Um, on iPhones, we, can't, we can remote in, but we can't do anything. We can just see the screen. We can't actually interact with the phone, so we can't install anything. So I understand you can't bring the phone in you know, from out of state. I get that. You know, we're not the only provider on the planet that can secure a phone, though. Um, so, you know, just make sure you're protected, guys. I mean, this is, this is a nightmare. This is an absolute, unmitigated disaster of a nightmare for the people that got hit by this. Uh, businesses completely wiped out. Um, I found out that Dropbox actually has a really cool feature that I wasn't aware of. Um, so there's Dropbox, the free version that everybody can use. And then you can actually pay to get more space. Dropbox is a lot more expensive when you pay for it than things like Google Drive and things like that. But I guess they offer you some ad other additional benefits. For example, uh, one business, a design company in Lincoln, got hit by this, uh, but they save all of their stuff in a Dropbox so that they can share it between all the computers in the office easily that way and, and laptops off-site and everything else. Well, the infection got into one of the computers and encrypted the Dropbox and spread to all the other computers through the Dropbox, just like the OneDrive story I shared at the beginning of the program. So all their office computers and everyone's personal computer who was linked to that Dropbox got infected. As a result, we bring it into the service center, we remove the infections from the computers, and we go to log into the Dropbox. And Dropbox has what's called a rewind feature. So if you pay for Dropbox, you can use the rewind feature to roll back that folder to a particular date in time. Um, and of course, we wanted to roll back the entire Dropbox, so we had to contact support and do that. But they rewound the entire Dropbox to the day before the virus attack happened, and they did not have to pay a ransom, and they got all their data back. That particular style of backup is called a differential backup. Um, it, that's one word for it. I guess differential might not be the best description for it. But basically, it's a, it's a backup that saves different points in time. So there's actually multiple backup sets, and then each backup set when you send your new backup, it only backs up the stuff that has changed. That's what makes it differential. So it takes the old backup and says, this is now the new backup as well, and then change anything that's been changed, and now we have a current one. And then the next day, slide it over there. Here's the new backup. Change whatever needs to be changed. There's our new backup. So right now, what we're working on at Schrock is we have, we have corporate clients that um, it, it's a tough position to be in. Hey, Schrock, we, uh, we count on you to secure us. Why did we get hit? And after the 22-hour shift, I just want to say, you got hit because you got an employee using Internet Explorer. You got an unauthorized one-box installation here. And I can't be here 24 hours a day to slap your children on the wrist. You need some cyber policies. I can help you implement them, but this isn't the first time I've told you not to use Internet Explorer. Um, yeah, the other thing is, is there any reason in this entire office that anybody on any computer or any network should be on social media, should be uh, uh, sharing files on a P2P file sharing platform, or streaming media? If the answer is no, they shouldn't be watching TV, or listening to internet radio, or sharing files on a torrent, or on social media while they're on the clock, I can block all that at the router. 
yet when we've told you to do that, the front desk people don't like that. So this is a different business. The front desk people don't like that, so they told us not to do that. Maybe somebody wants to listen to internet radio, you know what I mean? They can do that from their phone. Well, then they have to use their data plan. Well, yeah, they do. If they want to listen to the radio, they're going to pay for the data. Funny, they have these boxes with knobs on them that you can, like, turn the dial, and they come on, and it, like, pulls music from the air. It's amazing, right? You know, how serious are you taking your business's security? Are you going to risk the entire operation of your business so that someone at your office can play online radio? Is it worth it? No, it's not. Now, at home, we stream stuff all the time, so we aren't going to disable streaming. I want to watch Netflix just like you do. There's Hulu. There'll be Disney Plus soon. You've got Amazon Prime. We all want to watch that stuff, so we're not going to disable streaming in our house. But there are things that can be done to the router that are way more advanced than what I can describe on the radio. I spent the entire weekend messing with my own router at home because I'm so freaked out about this stuff, guys. Because the level of security that I have at home is pretty good. It's better than what most of my clients have because I'm willing to do the things that need to be done to secure it and put those restrictions in place. But now I'm taking it to another level. Is there a reason that the Xbox needs to have internet connectivity in the middle of the night when my son is supposed to be asleep anyway? No, no reason. Is there a reason that my Echo B thermostat, my internet connected thermostat, should be allowed to stream media? Well, it is Alexa enabled, so I suppose I could stream music through this tiny little button speaker on the thermostat. Why would you do that? No, there's no reason that needs to happen. So let's disable that. Um, P2P file sharing. Am I going to be downloading any torrents on my thermostat? No, I'm not. Why do I need to allow that to happen? No, Echo B is locked down. Uh, same thing with you know my Amazon Echo or my uh, you know web-enabled cameras. Is there any reason that these devices should have all these capabilities allowed by default? Now, chances are none of these devices are going to ever be exploited in a way that would that would be protected by what I'm doing. But I'm so freaked out right now that I'm like, no, lock it down. There's no reason why I risk it. All I have to do is click a button, and then I can forget I ever clicked the button. That's dumb. Let's do it. Especially when I go into my own router's logs, and my own router tells me that the AI in my router blocked three intrusion attempts by ransomware last month on my network at home. Yes, it never got through the network. The router did what it was supposed to do. But, and it didn't alert me. I wasn't even aware of it. So that's great. But what if? What if it would have got through? Holy cow. My wife is a photographer. She does all of the catalog work for Schrock. She takes all the pictures of everything for Schrock. She takes all the pictures for, of our kids for their entire lives. Yes, we have backups. And yes, now we have a cold storage backup. You better believe it. Uh, because, wow, all this was breaking Monday morning, literally about 7 a.m., because it all happened on Sunday. So Monday morning, it all starts hitting the fan. And literally, it was like, I get a call, and my corporate client has ransomware. I'm like, oh, nuts. This is not going to be good. Okay, let's get on this. And then as I'm getting out of the shower, my phone rings again. I look down, and it's a text message. Oh, my gosh. A customer has ransomware. Completely not a corporate client, not somebody that, you know, I had a guy come in that had an encrypted computer, and he looked at me, and he goes, Thor. Or he said, are you related to Mr. Schrock? And I said, well, I am Mr. Schrock. And he said, wow, you have lost a lot of weight. And yes, about six years ago, I lost 60 pounds, okay? <laughs> and then I put 20 of it back on, all right? I'm working on that. But yeah, I lost a bunch of weight, but this guy hadn't seen me in like five years. And he has hit with ransomware. So we actually had some of our, one of our corporate clients saying, well, it sure is funny. I've talked to other shops in town and no one else seems to know anything about a ransomware wave going through the city or anything like that. It sure is odd that only Schrock customers are getting hit by this. Okay, and I understand right now this gentleman's business is, is hobbled. This is, his life, this is his livelihood. He's got people to pay. He's got a family to support. Uh, he's got people counting on him. He's got bills to pay, just like Schrock does, just like any business does. And I totally get that. The stress level here is off the charts. Then you have to pay a ransom, and it's $3,000, and that's not fun. Then you find out you have to pay a second ransom. That's going to be another $3,000, and there's the possibility there'll be a third one. But we won't know that until the time comes. 
Um, his position is, well, Schrock, you should be paying the ransoms for me. My position is Schrock doesn't pay ransoms for clients. Um, we just don't because, yeah, have insurance for that if you're a business. Business interruption insurance, it's there. It's a real thing. You can get that. Uh, it covers ransomware in many cases. Uh, so he's going to look into, you know, insurance claims. But the, you know, and, I, and so I totally understand why, you know, the, the frustration of where that's coming from. And then to insinuate that he got infected because we didn't do our job right. And I sit through and I dig through. And then, you know, all week this is rattling around in my head like, did we screw up? Was there, a, he says his server wasn't scanned since May, and I went and checked, and sure enough, it says it hadn't been scanned since May on his computer, but I can look at our logs, and I can see that it's been scanned every week, and I can see that it's been updated all the time. I can see that he was migrated in June to the new version. So yes, of course he's had a scan since May, because it would have scanned when we installed it. But you know, you get those doubts rolling around in your head, and you're like, oh my gosh. And then when, when they hit you with the, well, should... This is this is your fault basically. Um, it just and you're and you're running on two hours of sleep. It makes you a little testy. I, I maintain my decorum um, because my job here is to is to make this as seamless and painless as a painful situation can be for my customer. And so we go through, we get the job done. We got his you know, billing and front end back up and everything. And now we got to get the rest of it up. But yeah, there is a wave of ransomware going through right now. While I was on the show, I didn't have time to talk about this, but I'm looking at a live threat detection map right now that is detecting botnet and command and control server activity for ransomware servers. When I started the show, there were 1.4 million active online botnet and ransomware servers. Um, now there's 1.8 million. If that tells you how fast this stuff spreads. Now that's worldwide, of course, but there are red circles over the city of Omaha on the map right now of active botnets spreading ransomware. Now there's active circles on every city on the map, just to be fair. So is there a wave of ransomware sweeping through the Omaha metro area? The answer is yes. In a more detailed newscast you would hear, but there always is. Now the thing that made the WannaCry ransomware so incredibly powerful was the WannaCry ransomware took all of these other exploits and an NSA thing that was released by the Snowden dump and put it all together into one really nasty package and then it spread itself using Internet of Things devices. Those security cameras that everybody buys from China on Amazon and they're great. We run them in the service centers too. As long as you secure them, they're great. The challenge is nobody secures them. So you get them, the password is admin, admin to get in, and then once you're in, you plug in the wife, the wife, or the Wi-Fi, the Ethernet connector in the back, and you can remote in and you can watch the cameras and see what's going on at work and everything. So this is an internet connected device that has no default username or password that's accessible from outside the network. What do you think is going to happen? Now the problem is that these devices are cheap. They're a hundred, two hundred bucks to, to to buy. And when you install them, you don't need to have a huge security person to install them. And because they're made in China, the directions are garbage. Um, you know, they won't, they tell you it's important to change the password, but they don't write their software in such a way. Like modern routers, when you install a new router now, the first thing they ask you to do is pick a password. Like you have to pick a password and you can't click next until it's done because they, they're going to make you pick a password. These cameras don't do that. So WannaCry was using these cameras to spread all over the world. And it was spreading unchecked because a business gets infected. They clean everything. They fix everything. Then they bring it all back online again. And what in the world is happening? How did we get reinfected? Everything is locked. Nobody even thought to look at the camera system. That's why WannaCry was so bad. This is not that bad. But that's why WannaCry was so bad. So when the bad guys decide to take this piece and this piece and this piece and squeeze them all together into a new and unique way, all of a sudden, really bad things like this happen. So this is what's this is the consequence right now. So guys, make sure you've got Endpoint on your computers. We can install Endpoint over the Schrock desk for you. We can do it no matter where you're at in the world, and we can keep that computer protected. But you've got to protect every entry point on the network, whether it's a Mac, whether it's a PC, or whether it's Linux. All those camera systems, Linux guys, they were all running Linux of one flavor or another. Macs were pretty much running Unix, right? With, with an overlay on top. Now, Linux users will argue that that's not true U Linux because 
you know, Apple's got a custom overlay on it, and that's what gets infected. Not the impervious Linux under system. Linux has vulnerabilities as well, guys. We all know that. There is no such thing as a perfect system that doesn't get attacked. The thing is, this particular ransomware, this one, doesn't like Macs. So it leaves Macs untouched on the network. It only infects PCs, because PCs have the biggest return on investment. Because there's more of them. There's 90-something percent of all the computing population is PC. But WannaCry didn't, didn't make such distinctions. It said, PC, Mac, Linux, we don't care. Infect it all. Go. It was getting servers. It was, it was going everywhere. And the only thing, there was gonna, it was going to cause something like $20 billion of damage worldwide. And the only thing that stopped it, I mentioned earlier in the show the command and control server. Some researcher found that this was where the command and control domain was. And the way that WannaCry was coded, if this domain was reserved, it was like a kill switch that caused WannaCry to stop. So this guy went out and spent $10 and reserved the domain on a discount domain reservation service. And this one security researcher said, 